Are you considering a plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, PHEV, but unsure if it's the right choice for you? Well, in this video, we dive deep into the truth about hybrid cars and explore why a PHEV is possibly the last car you should choose. From understanding the technology behind hybrid vehicles, their environmental impact, to the potential savings on fuel costs, we cover all the key aspects you need to know. Whether you're an eco-conscious driver or just curious about the latest in automotive technology, this video is packed with valuable insights to help you make an informed choice. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more automotive content. I'm Dave, this is Dave Takes It On. Well, the sales of hybrids and plug-in hybrids, yeah, there is a huge difference between them, has simply rocketed in recent years, and although slowing down now, they represent the future for many people. But are they wrong? What should you buy? Well, we start by looking at the difference between the various hybrid types so you can make a more educated decision. Well, petrol cars, they're really simple. You fill them up with petrol and you drive where you want. Typically, you might get three, four or 500 miles on a full tank. And then when you do stop, all you do is top them up and set off again. It's what we have known all our entire driving lives. But along with the simplicity comes pollution and climate change. These cars do have exhaust pipes. And while they are an awful lot better than they used to be, they do emit CO2, carbon dioxide, which experts claim is affecting the global climate. And they also emit poisonous, toxic and carcinogenic gases and chemicals, which have now been proven by experts to harm every single man, woman and child on the planet. When electric cars arrived, claiming to be the green solution, and indeed they are very much better. They do not have exhaust pipes, so they emit zero pollution or CO2 from the car. And the old idea is that it was just transferring the power to the coal-fired power station that produces electricity to charge your cars. Well, that's now pure fiction because our last surviving coal-fired power generator is closing down next week forever. We'll have none left. None at all. The grid is actually going very green. And most days, more electricity is produced from renewable sources than any other, including fossil fuels. But electric vehicles have their own problems, and the main one centres around range. While the huge majority of people drive less than 8,000 miles a year, it's 140 miles a week or 20 miles a day, they also believe that having a range of two to 300 miles is just not enough for them. And the media has convinced them, no, you need something anywhere between 500 and 1,000 mile range before you should even consider an EV. Well, they've also been convinced that taking an hour to recharge the battery is totally unacceptable compared to the five minutes it takes to fill a tank. And they're right, nobody any longer takes an hour. That's come way down. Anyway, finally, EVs are a leap into the unknown, and for most people, it takes them out of their comfort zone. Well, for these people, the legacy auto industry, the giants we all know and grew up with, like Ford, Vauxhall, Citroën, Volvo, Mercedes, and the rest, invented the halfway house. They called it the hybrid. Well, the logic, I have to say, is totally sound. If you want a battery, well, we'll give you a battery, and it will be capable of driving your car just for very short distances, often less than a mile or so. If you want to go any further, they're going to install a bigger battery and install a really small economical petrol engine and a very small fuel tank. You've now got the best of both worlds. Local trips, you can now use batteries only, up to about 30 or 40 miles. Long trips, just use the petrol. And it's ideal if only it worked like that, but they don't. That picture is not true. Well, let's look at hybrids and there's a wide range of types. And the RAC has a great explanation. They say, in simple terms, a hybrid vehicle, also known as a self-charging hybrid, boasts a small battery and an electric motor to boost efficiency. 
It requires a petrol or diesel engine as its primary means of propulsion, but a mile or so of pure electric range should be achievable in the city. So just to explain, you cannot plug in a hybrid. The battery can only charge up from regenerative braking. Every time you press the brake pedal, instead of using friction discs and pads to slow you down, it uses an electric generator to charge up the battery and the energy generated slows the car down. It feels exactly the same, but underneath it operates very differently. The battery and electric motor can do some of the work that the petrol engine normally does. In stop-go traffic, for example, or a slow daily commute, it isn't actually using really free energy. Brake, generate electricity. Accelerate, use that electricity. They are simple to operate as there is nothing you need to do. The car makes all the decisions for you. But the range of hybrids is just a handful of miles. And that could be an issue if you commute, say, 10 miles a day each way. Well, this is where a hybrid cannot do that, but they've invented the plug-in hybrid, PHEV. Again, the REC explanation is a good start. A plug-in hybrid goes a step further. It retains a petrol or diesel engine, but it has a larger battery, delivers up to 50 miles of electric range, depending on the model. The battery can be recharged using a home charge point or by taking advantage of the expanding public charging network. You could see plug-in hybrids as a stepping stone towards fully electric vehicles because you're able to do some of the driving on electric power, but you still have the safety net of an internal combustion engine to back you up. So, best of both worlds? Well, the larger battery can now handle a typical 10-mile daily commute both ways on full electric. So, in theory, it's exactly like a full electric vehicle, but with a petrol engine as a backup or for longer journeys. But is it true? Well, sadly, no. <clears throat> you see, the hybrid has a very small battery and only ever drives a mile or two on electric. That power can easily be produced by regenerative braking. A PHEV has a much bigger battery, it's capable of driving 20, 30, 40, maybe 50 miles on battery alone, and that cannot be charged by braking. Braking will still produce a small amount, but the battery is simply too big. To get the battery fully charged, you must plug it in. That's why it's called a plug-in hybrid. So remember, hybrids cannot be plugged in, PHEVs can be plugged in or use petrol, and EVs can only be plugged in. The PHEV sounds like the ideal compromise. Top up the battery and you can get to and from work purely on electricity every day. But if you want to head to the beach, Use up whatever electricity you have in the battery at the time, and when it runs out, you simply switch over to the petrol engine for the rest of the journey. Well, the biggest problem here is that many people see PHEVs as a good interim if they cannot charge at home. After all, if they could charge at home, they could probably buy an EV. So, what's the problem? Well, I know personally several people who've bought a PEV, PHEV, but cannot charge at home. For them, the only way to charge that larger battery is at a public EV charger, and that costs money. A typical public charger offering slow overnight electricity at a street charger costs around 50 pence per kilowatt hour. You can get cheaper somewhere, and some of them are still offering free electricity, but they're fairly rare. You've got to go and search for them. So how much would it cost to top up your battery, and how long would that last? Well, a PHEV battery is typically between about 10 and 20 kilowatt hours. That's its capacity. And one kilowatt hour of electricity at a fast charger costs around 50 pence. So a full battery might cost you less than a fiver or up to a tenner to fill. And that sounds a lot cheaper than filling up with petrol and paying £60 for a tank full. But the question is, how far can you drive on that? Well, a full BEV can cover about four miles per kilowatt hour, but these are optimised for efficiency. They're built to be as light as possible. A PHEV isn't. 
It has a big lump of a petrol engine, a big lump of a gearbox and a petrol tank full of fuel. Most PVs operating on electricity get just over two miles per kilowatt hour. So your full battery, you might get 30 or 40 miles range. That means if you got 40 miles and paid 10 pound, your electric motoring is costing you about 20 to 25 pence per mile. So how's that compared to driving on petrol? Well, a typical PHEV might get about 50, even 60 miles a gallon. A gallon contains 4.55 litres and each litre of petrol today costs about £1.35. So a gallon of petrol costs today about £6.14. That might take you as much as 60 miles. More realistically, it'd be about 50. So driving on electricity from a public charger costs between 20 and 25 pence per mile, and driving on petrol alone costs 10 to 12 pence per mile. Hold on, that can't be true. Use petrol only, I only pay about 10 to 12p a mile, but on electricity, I pay over 20p a mile. Why bother? That is the point of this video. Indeed, why bother? I'll tell you why. If you can charge your home and if you switch your tariff to a cheap overnight off-peak rate, you can pay as little as 3.8 pence per kilowatt hour, but average is about seven. So do the same equation. Now you're charging your PHEV at home on the cheap rate and you find you can drive around on electric only at about 4p a mile. That is not only cheap, it's now much greener because you're not using your petrol engine at all for commuting. Does anyone see the dilemma here, or do I need to spell it out for you? If you cannot charge it home, you should not even consider a PHEV. It would be a total waste of your money. You'd be better off buying a pure petrol version at a much lower price. And it may well be slightly more economical as well, because it's not lugging around a redundant battery in the electric motor. But if you can charge it home, and you only drive 10 miles each day, each way, all of it on electric, why have you got a petrol engine under the bonnet in the first place? And the car can only do about two miles per watt hour, uh, kilowatt hour on electric. Buy a full EV and you'll get four miles per kilowatt hour. So at the same seven pence per kilowatt hour on the cheap off-peak rate, your motoring on pure electric now costs you less than 2p a mile, miserly 2p. Or am I missing something? But it gets worse in the real world because if you buy a PHEV and if you can charge it home and if you think it's not worth the hassle of switching your tariff to a cheap overnight rate, then you will top up your battery at home at the standard variable rate, which is currently 24.5 pence per kilowatt hour and due to go up on the 1st of October. So you pay about 12p per mile. Well, that's exactly the same as if you ran your car on petrol. Why bother? The very people who buy a PHEV because they cannot charge at home are the ones that will pay them more if they go out of their way to find a public charger where they can leave their car plugged in, possibly overnight. So let's look at that final equation. If a car does more mile per gallon, it's burning less fuel, therefore producing less pollution per mile driven. Let's have a look at a Peugeot 308. These are available in petrol, PHEV and full EV form. Let's see the comparison. Well, a Peugeot 308 petrol costs 38,160, the PHEV 44,450, and a full BEV 49,650. The PHEV shows an official MPG of 200 miles, WLTP. Nobody ever gets that, it's, it's fixed. Uh, but most of them, if you look at the car review sites and the real world sites, they claim about 70 miles per gallon is achievable. Now, my point is, you could save to save close to £5,000 by choosing the full petrol version and get almost the same economy. Does that mean I'm against it, PHEVs? No, not at all. They definitely have their place. It's just not for everyone. If you religiously plug in every night and you switch your electricity to cheap off-peak rate and charges only overnight, then a PHEV is certainly a good option for you. Maybe not the best, but a good option. But to get the best value out of switching, go all electric. It will cost you far less to run and it'll be cleaner. Just ask yourself why it's not on your option list. In many cases, it'll be just that you've heard the no good, the media hype, and all the reasons why you should never buy one. Well, the full EV is 5,000 pound dearer than the PHEV, 
but you will get better economy. In plain English, every mile you drive in the EV will cost you less. If you can charge it home and will switch your utility company, an electric vehicle is almost a no-brainer. And with a real-world range of well over 200 miles, a single charge once a week will see you through comfortably. Well, in all cases, if you've got any doubts, don't listen to the hysteria of the media. Find out for yourself. Go and find someone who's got one and talk to someone who drives one. This is a big investment you're looking at, so better to get it right first time. Well, thanks for watching. I'm Dave. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. It costs nothing, but it really does help the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel, have a look at our Patreon membership. It gives you additional features, and the details for that are down below in the description. I'm Dave.